Hello, welcome to this training video on DCS World's Mission Editor. Today, we're going to get acquainted with the Mission Editor, and we're also going to learn how to place an object, which is going to be your aircraft, as well as a, a small target range close by that you can go and attack. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we are at the DCS World main menu. Uh, I have the Harrier set up as my background. We're going to go over to the right-hand side over here and select Mission Editor from the list of options. Now this might take a little while to load, depends on how recently you've opened the game. Generally on first load, it could take up to a couple minutes. Um, it will load and you'll be fine. Just give it a while. Don't click out of the window if you have multiple monitors because that'll tend to crash the game. It's gotten better than it used to be, but it still does tend to be an issue. So here we go, the mission editor is loading. And there we go, textures and everything. Cool. So this is the Caucasus region in the Georgia area, Georgia-Russia border. We're going to start our spawn at Kabuleti, and we're going to put our target range down here at this little airport that is a little bit to the southwest of our starting position. All of the options in the top menu should be fairly self-explanatory. If you click on all of these, you'll definitely get the menu drop-down, and you'll be able to kind of pick what you want to do. I tend to use the left-hand menu because I am more familiar with the mission editor and I know what all of these guys do and it's just quicker to go and click on a button than it is to go up to the menu at the top and try and read which options I want to use. So the first thing I generally tend to do when I get started is I always, if I'm not opening an existing mission to edit it, I'll always create a new mission. Even though by default this gives me an empty map with nothing on it, when I click create new mission, it gives me a prompt that allows me to select which uh, countries I want in which faction. So you can do red versus blue. You can also have a bunch of neutral countries as you can see. You can also pick which map you want to be doing your mission in. Uh, since I want to make this accessible to as many people as possible, I'm going to be developing this map in the Caucasus region, which is the free map that comes with DCS World 2.5. I generally tend to put everybody on the blue team that is on the red team, except for Iran, North Korea. I tend to keep Syria in there as well, and I always put the insurgents over there. This gives me a good group of units to be able to pick from. I don't particularly feel that any of these guys are necessarily the bad guys in real life or not, uh, any more than anybody else on either side would be. Uh, I generally tend to keep everybody here neutral. Feel free to put them on whichever side you wish. And then once you're done customizing this, you can always click OK. That'll reload a map, which will give you those as the various factions. So you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the map. The zoom tends to follow where your mouse cursor is placed. So you'll notice if I put my cursor over Cabaletti and zoom in, I will zoom in on Cabaletti. If I zoom out, I'll be zooming out on Kabuleti, and then let's say I want to go up to Sukumi up here. If I start zooming in, Sukumi will kind of be the focus of where the zoom is. So let's start with Kabuleti. We're going to go ahead and click on the airport here. We're going to change this to blue. And then you can leave everything else default. The blue, red, neutral essentially chooses which side this airport will allow to refuel and rearm when a plane lands there. So if you're playing a red versus blue campaign of some sort, multiplayer, if a red pilot were to land at a blue airport, they would not be able to rearm or repair their aircraft while they were there. We're going to go ahead and get started here. On the left hand side, we're going to click on the plane, and this is going to represent our aircraft. You can also have it represent enemy aircraft or wingmen that you want to fly with you. We're going to go ahead and just click anywhere near the airport, and it's going to place down an aircraft. Then we're going to go and customize our group here. Since the next tutorial series that I'm going to be working on is going to be the TF-51, I'm going to place a P-51. And the reason I'm not going to place a TF-51 is they're essentially the same airplane. The TF-51 doesn't let you use weapons. But as far as functionality and most of the layout inside the cockpit, you could consider them pretty much the same. So I'm going to call my aircraft group P-51D Flight Group and country is USA. Unit, this is going to be one of one for now. I might add a, a wingman or two. 
type, I'm going to go and select my P51. So now the difference between the various colors here. All of the grayed out aircraft are ones that you can place no problem. But the ones that are highlighted yellow are ones that you own. Those are modules that are available that you own. So you'll notice that I don't own the Vigan. Um, it is an aircraft that I'm interested in. I just haven't gotten around to picking it up yet. Um, but I do own the A-10A, the A-10C, the Harrier, uh, BF-109, F-15. All of these yellow ones are air aircraft that I own. So I can actually jump into those and uh, fly them. But I can place any other aircraft I want anywhere I want. So I'm going to go ahead and select the P-51. Skill, I'm going to change to Client. So... These skills, the average, good, high, excellent, and random are all AI-controlled aircraft. If you're going to pick client or player, client is basically a multiplayer slot. So if you fly the mission with a friend or a group of friends, all of the client slots will be slots that you can join as players. Uh, the player slot is for a single-player mission. If you're going to host this mission or put it up somewhere, where people can download it and join, and you want them to be in a specific aircraft for the duration of the mission, that would be the player air, the, the player slot. And you'll notice that that one is uh, yellow to kind of indicate that it's you know where the player is going to be. It's it's going to be in a module that you own. Uh, client also, those aircraft will not spawn if nobody is there to occupy them. So let's say we filled this entire airfield up with uh, aircraft and we made them all client, and then only one person joins only one aircraft is going to spawn. If five people join, whatever aircraft they put themselves into are the ones that are going to be able to participate in the mission. All of the other ones just won't exist. So speaking of the airport, you'll notice that as you zoom in and out, the closer you get in, once you get to a particular zoom level, you'll see that all of these uh, parking spot numbers show up. So these are the various areas you can start on the airfield. In this case, I want to start my aircraft at uh, parking spot 29. So we're going to go ahead and select client because this is going to eventually be a multiplayer mission. So you and your friends can join and you'll have a target range to attack. For pilot name, I'm going to go ahead and put P-51 flight lead. Tail number is not super important. The rest of this is not super important. Hidden on map and late activation are not super important for this for the purposes of this mission. We'll get into those later. I would leave them unchecked. Late activation is for AI aircraft. If you want something to maybe not be visible on the map or be in the mission until a particular condition occurs. For example, in my mission asset extraction, which I had released in DCS 1.2.4, I believe, I had I had many spawns for many different aircraft. If people spawned into air-to-air -air aircraft, then uh, via late activation, a set of air-to-air -air aircraft targets for them would spawn and start harassing people in the rest of the mission. So the, the primary purpose of the mission, it was a close air support and a rescue mission, basically, for a, a, an embedded asset. And I didn't want air-to-air -air planes to be spawning and shooting people down constantly unless there was a way to counter them. So there were a lot of anti-air ground assets in the area of where we were doing the close air support mission, but I didn't want all of a sudden, you know, a bunch of SU-25s or SU-27s to show up and just start picking people off out of the sky when they really didn't have any way to kind of counteract that. So using late activation, I was able to place several groups of anti-air or air-to-air -air units, and only if people spawned in air-to-air -air aircraft on the on the friendly side would those units spawn and, and start coming in. So it added a, a level of dynamicness to the campaign or the, the, the mission that I put together in that I had, I think, 10 different um, modules involved in the rescue operation, and units would only spawn if particular aircraft were available to deal with them. Uh, hidden on map, I'm not 100% sure. I believe that that means that even if the unit is in the mission, you won't be able to see them on the map regardless of whether you have labels turned on or anything. So we've got our flight group set here. We're gonna come down to this waypoint tab down here on the on the bottom right. Now you'll notice that I've placed my aircraft and this is now automatically in add waypoint mode. So this is my initial waypoint. Now if I try and click on my aircraft to drag them over to my parking spot, it's just gonna keep adding waypoints because it's, it's expecting me to add waypoints. That's the mode that it's in by default. This is super confusing and actually really annoying. Um, 
I think it should start an edit so you can drag your guy around wherever you want him, and then you have to manually go into add and start putting waypoints around. But uh, that's my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click delete, and that's going to delete the last four waypoints that I put. You cannot delete your aircraft with this. So you can just delete all the waypoints you want and not have to worry about you know, blowing away a group, um, which is fine. I want this guy to start in spot 29. So what I'm going to do is actually click on edit so that I can drag him around and not place waypoints. It doesn't really matter where I put him because the next step is setting this waypoint type to take off from parking hot. Now you have various options here. You have a flyover point, take off from runway, take off from ramp, landing, and turning point. Turning point is the default and that's basically a point where an aircraft is going to turn around that air that that position. It doesn't necessarily mean the airplane needs to fly over that point. That's what a flyover point waypoint is for. A turning point is basically a here's your next step, get there and then start your turn and then end up on your next leg. You don't have to fly over that waypoint. Um, it allows a little bit more flexibility in navigation if somebody needs to say a go around or whatever, they'll be able to as far as AI are concerned, they will. They'll always turn early, they'll, they'll miss the waypoint itself, but they'll end up on their next leg. It makes things a, a bit more natural. Flyover points are if you want a guy to absolutely fly over that particular point in space before starting his turn to the next leg. Take off from runway. If we click on that, you'll notice that the aircraft is going to stick to the center of the runway. That just means that the airplane is going to be started, ready to go, and on the active side of the runway. So you're going to be pointing the direction you need to go, and you can immediately just give yourself uh, full throttle and take off. I don't particularly like that, and I don't think it's a smart decision to put several aircraft in uh, a takeoff from runway position, because if people keep spawning in on top of each other, they're just going to explode. So... Take off from ramp, we'll put an aircraft on one of the parking spots and kind of stick them there. I, I'm not going to be able to move him. He's going to snap back to the, uh, the, the parking spot that he's assigned to. Um, the aircraft start completely cold. So this is going to be a cold start. You're going to be sitting in the cockpit. The aircraft is going to be off. You're going to have to do a startup procedure to make sure that you can get the aircraft started up, ready to go. This is my preferred for me because I'm crazy and I'm a sim guy. Uh, I like being able to go through the startup procedure just to make sure that I've got it, you know, keep it fresh in my mind. But if you're doing mission testing, or if it's a training map, or if you don't really care about doing the startup procedure, maybe you do want a couple of startup, you know, cold start procedure aircraft, but you also want a couple that are hot just so that you can jump in and play if you want to. That's when you're going to want to do takeoff from parking hot, in which the aircraft, when you start in, is going to be completely ready to go. Uh, engines are on, everything is set and all you really need to do is taxi to the runway and take off. So in this case, I'm setting up a training mission, so I don't want to have to do a startup procedure every time I jump in because I'm going to be making a lot of different modifications and then testing them to make sure that they're actually implemented the way that I want. So in order to go through a you know two-minute, three-minute startup procedure every single time, yeah, I'm really going to know how to start that plane up, but it's going to waste time, and it, it might take me, you know, an hour and a half to put a mission together that should only take 45 minutes, depending on how long it takes to start up a particular aircraft. In the case of the A-10C, for example, uh, you've got at least a four-minute startup procedure because you have to wait for the GPS to align, the INS, uh, the inertial navigation system to align. And you're just going to be sitting there doing nothing, waiting for it while the rest of the mission is going on. And at a certain point in some missions, that might be what you want because you want to check timing. You want to make sure that somebody's if there is a time constraint on your mission that somebody needs to get through their startup procedure as quickly as possible before, you know, a failure event occurs or something else happens. But just to kind of get the basics set up in a mission, I would start uh, take off from parking hot, and then you can jump in, test stuff, test play it, uh, unit placement, and it, it just makes for a more streamlined testing procedure, testing workflow if you want. You'll also notice when I said uh, takeoff from parking um, or ramp or wherever, it changes the altitude, the altitude of the airfield. Now I can also set which parking spot I want to take off from. So I, I want to take off from 29 because it's the easiest. I can just taxi straight out to 25 and turn left and take off. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and change parking to parking spot 29. There we go. And when you're taking off from the parking, 
uh, or the ramp, the speed is not, it, it's irrelevant. It, you're not going to be rolling at 270, taking off from a cold start. That's more for aircraft that are flying. So, in the P-51, the waypoints don't really mean anything. If you look at the kneeboard, it'll show you where your waypoints are going. But there is no navigation in the P-51. It's all old school. So putting waypoints at particular spots is useful for somebody who's maybe looking at the map view. They'll be able to see kind of what you expect them to do. But as far as navigation in the mission, it's not going to make that big of a difference. So it's really up to you whether you, whether you want to add waypoints or not. In this case, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it just so that you know. But uh, you'll also see once we get into the mission that it doesn't really make a difference for this particular aircraft. If you add, say, an A-10 um, or any of the more modern aircraft, their uh, TDCs, their map displays on their MFDs are going to be able to display where the waypoints are. Their HUDs are going to be able to show where they are based on their flight path, their expected flight path. Um, etc. So it can be useful for a particular aircraft, but there are aircraft that it really doesn't make any difference, especially if you're putting together a real quick mission like this. It, it isn't necessarily worth it. But let's go ahead and set up a waypoint to our easy range, and then let's also set up a waypoint out here to where our approach would be. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add. My first waypoint, I'm going to want it to be down here. So I'm going to click. You'll notice that I have one waypoint. I can give it a name, and I'm going to call it Easy Targets. And then I'll click, let's see, altitude, 6,500 feet. That's a bit high. I'm going to say 5,000 should be a good altitude to be at, to be attacking targets. Now I'm going to go ahead and click out here, and I'm just going to say base to final, and that'll be our base to final turn. Not super important again, and then I can click here, and I can actually make this a landing waypoint, and that'll stick it to the air field, and that's where you're expected to end up. If this was an AI aircraft, it would follow these waypoints and then it would know to land when it gets here. As a player, the waypoint's there, but the player can really do whatever he wants. So I'm not even going to name it because if it's going to the airfield, you can pretty much expect it's going to be a landing waypoint, and I don't want to clutter up the map with a bunch of text. I've got the text here and here already, so a bunch of text over the airfield itself might be a little bit much. All right, so here's our flight group. We're good to go. I'm actually going to click on edit here again so I don't start adding more waypoints. I'm going to click on my airplane and I'm going to set unit one of two. So now I have a wingman and I can actually give him a name too. I'll say P51D flight group flight wingman. I'll just say wingman. Now, since he's set to client, if I had a friend join me, that would be the spot that he would be. He would be able to select either one of those slots. Uh, in this case, I would actually recommend that he picks the easier one, and then I would pick this one that has the two turns, just to be easier on him. But now I have two possible locations that people can spawn. So I'm going to call that flight group complete. So we're done. I can actually close this, or I can just go ahead and click on my ground units over here and start placing these. So you'll notice that these guys are no longer highlighted, but you can still see them, so you know what's in the map. We're going to be taking off from Cabaletti. We're going to go to easy targets, base to final, and then land again. Oop, I forgot one thing. Let me actually close this. Click on my flight group. We didn't set up any weapons. So here's our waypoints. If you click on the second tab, you'll get to pick your payload. And this might take a little bit of a... a a little bit of time to load. It's got to preload the textures for the aircraft. So for unit one of two, I'm going to set him to be Ferocious Frankie. And let's just do six rockets. And then if I click on this arrow here, I can switch to unit two of two, which is my wingman. I'll make him six rockets as well. And we'll make him Gentleman Jim. 
Now, I could make them both Ferocious Frankie if I wanted to. I like trying to pick a different livery for anybody on the friendly team. That way, you, you can differentiate between each other. It's really difficult to, but you can. I'm also going to be checking my weights and balance here. So we've got 68% fuel. Our fuel weight is 10,000, or I'm sorry, 1,097 pounds. We've got 1,400 pounds of weapons, 1,500 pounds of weapons. We're not adding any extra weight. And we are at 10,397 pounds out of a maximum of 10,582 pounds. So that's pretty close to our max gross weight. I'm actually going to change the fuel here to 60%. And that'll get us down to 10,267. That's a 300 pound buffer. That's good. I'll leave it there. So that's for unit two. I'm going to go back to unit one and do the same. Set you to 60%. There's the same, so we're good. All right, so now our flight groups are done. They've got weapons, they've got gas uh, set for the weapon load that they're taking. And the weight of the plane has a huge effect on how stable it is when it takes off, when you're doing takeoff or landing. If your plane is overweight, it's going to be all over the place. It's not going to want to take off. Um, and just like real life, it, you're, you're, you're over the max gross weight. The aircraft is not going to behave the way you expect it to. So I always try and give myself at least a couple hundred pound buffer over the or below the max gross weight unless there is a specific reason for me to want to kind of plan that into the mission. It's going to make flying the aircraft a lot more difficult. So you definitely want to keep in mind the skill level of the pilots that are going to be flying before you start over overweighting your aircraft. It is possible to take off overweight. Um, it's just very difficult. So now let's get started with our target range. Now we're going to go over here and pick our ground units. I'm going to go ahead and place a unit right here in the middle. And I'm going to make him... Let's see, we had insurgents, we had North Korea... Let's do insurgents. Let's see what they've got. So for the insurgents, I'm going to call this easy range targets. Actually, I'm going to do this bracket targets. Bracket easy range. And uh, we'll go over why I'm kind of tagging it this way in a later tutorial. It just makes it easier to kind of select it from a list later. So country is insurgents. I'm going to go ahead and select the rest of my options before I start adding more units. As you add more units, they take the default value, or they take the value of the, the primary unit. So in this case, I'm going to set this to unarmed because it's an easy range. All I want are fuel trucks and things like that. I don't want, I don't want things that are going to be fighting back. I just want targets to be able to shoot. When we start expanding and we add a medium range, then we'll start adding armor and, and other units that can fight back, and then players who join your map will have the option of going to the easy range and just taking out targets, or going to the medium range and ac actually having to deal with, you know, jinking and, and trying to get away from anti-aircraft fire, and then maybe we'll add a hard range later that also has rockets or air to, uh, ground to air missiles, surface to air missiles, and things of that nature. But for now, let's go ahead and pick which unit we want to place, which type of unit we want primarily in this easy range. So the cool thing here is it's an unarmed unit, but I can still click on the weapons panel. And what this is going to do is this is going to show me a preview of what the weapon looks like or what the unit looks like. So here this looks like a command post. And CP Ural 375. And I might use him for the central unit to kind of make it look like there's a command post and then several other units also around him. But I'm going to come back to that because it's easier to change one unit than it is to change the other 30 that we add or whatever. So let's keep going down our list. We could add fuel trucks. These are kind of fun. We can add this guy. We can add several transports. A lot of these are civilian themed. Here's a nice military one. We might use this one, the GAS-3308. I think the model needs a little bit of an update. That texture looks kind of kind of stretched, but I'm sure that's coming. We can also add a couple of these, GAS-66s. They look like weapons trucks. 
Icarus is a bus. Mm, I don't want to take out actual civilian targets. That's kind of weird. We could take these guys. These look like covered supply trucks. There's another bus. So in any case, I'm on the weapon screen. I can't actually pick any kind of, of weapon loadout for these units, but I can see what the units look like. So if you have no idea what a UAZ-469 is, you can always open up the weapons tab and see, oh, it's a little Jeep guy. You know, I can make this guy the the um, lead unit in a convoy or something. Here's a Ural-375. It's got a bunch of weapons and... Uh, fuel crates in the back. So I think I'm going to go with this. I'm going to I'm going to make primarily Ural 375s. I might add a couple of fuel trucks in there as well and the center unit I might make a command post. So I'm not too concerned about the unit names here. I don't really care their targets. Skill, I'm going to make them average, that's fine. Again, they're dumb targets, so it doesn't really matter. And that's all I need the weapon screen for, so I'm going to go ahead and close it out. So I've got this guy. Uh, I do want these guys visible on the map, and I do want them not to be late activation. Player cannot drive these guys, and they're not transportable. Transportable, I believe, means that a helicopter can pick them up. I think you can come in and hook them and then transport them somewhere. Don't quote me on that because I haven't put together any of those kind of missions yet, but I believe that's what that stands for. And I might be proven wrong in a future video, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see what, that, what, what happens there. So, everything here is going to be what's going to be copied over to each subsequent unit. So what I'm going to do is make sure that they're all correct. Insurgents, unarmed, Euro 375, unit name is not important, skill is average, heading is fine, that's pointing north, that's good enough for me. Paint scheme, default. Waypoints, we're not going to have any waypoints. That looks good. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to add, say, 10 units. It'll be a nice easy number. Uh, I'm going to add 11 units because then I'm going to have the central command post and then an even number on each side. So what I'm going to start doing is actually placing these guys where I want them. So let me go there, let me go there. Make this look like a target range. Place these guys kind of going up and down the runway, or the, yeah, the runways. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this center unit here, which is the first unit we put down, and I'm going to change him to the CP. So now the center unit is going to be the command post, the command vehicle. And let me say these guys here, I will make the fuel trucks. And I'll use the ATZ-10 because I remember those having a red stripe on the tank, and that'll make it visible uh, when you're flying by or at least more visible than just a green truck that you're attacking a fuel truck. There we go, we have two fuel trucks, and then we have a bunch of trucks that have ammo on, on them, and then a command post vehicle in the middle. And that should be good for this. That's all it is. I mean, that, that target range is set up, and our units are set up. So let's go ahead and go up to File and Save. I'm going to save it as Twitch Training Map. OK. File exists over right, yep. Now what I can do is on the left hand side, we have this green arrow, which is fly mission. This will actually uh, show you a real quick planning screen and you can click start and it'll load the mission for you. Now very similar to the map editor, if you've already loaded a mission, this goes really quickly because all of the assets are preloaded, they're already in memory. If you haven't loaded a mission recently, uh, this might take two, three minutes uh, sometimes. Uh, I run on solid state drive so it generally goes a little bit quicker for me than it does uh, for a lot of my friends who fly with me but um, just keep that in mind the game probably hasn't frozen it's probably just loading so here's our role selection for the uh, client uh, skill levels you'll see that I'm not automatically put into a plane I have this chooser I can pick which aircraft I actually want to fly in uh, it shows you can be a pilot you can be a pilot here's the name of the flight group here's where we're starting the task that's assigned to that particular unit, the country, and then this is actually the uh, tail number. 
it, for some reason, the pilot name is not listed anymore. It used to be in uh, 1.5, I believe. It would, it would show you the pilot name and no longer. Now it just shows you the tail number. So that's a little bit weird. I, I hope that at some point they change that or maybe make this a little bit wider and actually add the pilot names or maybe change role. Maybe the role should be the pilot name because then it'll be easy to see, oh, this is the P-51 wing lead or, or flight lead and this is the P-51 wingman. But uh, that's, a des that's a design decision that I'm not privy to. So uh, all I can do is bitch about it here and hope that they do something about it. It's not too big of an issue because usually if you're going to fly P-51 and it's a training mission like this, who cares which plane you're in? But um, it would be nice to be able to identify exactly which aircraft you're flying in. So I'm going to pick this uh, first pilot, uh, which I know is the one that's in parking spot 2-8, whichever one is straight and then left to get to the runway. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that it's going to load me into the aircraft. I'm going to get my trusty joystick and throttle out. And we're going to give this mission a real quick test. So you'll notice we also started this out as a takeoff from parking hot. That's the waypoint type that we put in here. And as you can see, we are in our parking spot and our engine is on and running. And you'll notice that the other uh, client aircraft that we placed over in that parking spot is not there because I don't have a, uh, a friend flying with me. So if a friend were to join me right now, let's say I hosted this as a multiplayer server and he jumped in right now, his plane would pop in as soon as he loaded in. So that's the difference between cl client, uh, player, and then setting up like AI aircraft. If they were AI, AI aircraft, they would already be there. They would be ready to go as well. So here we are. I'm not going to go into all of the specifics for flying the P-51 or the TF-51, but um, that'll be in a future tutorial series, which is coming very soon. But let's go ahead and take off and, and take a quick look and make sure that all of our targets are there. So I got a lot of really good comments from everybody about how these tutorial series have helped them out. Uh, I get a lot of really good questions in the comments. Um, if you guys enjoy the videos, please subscribe, give them a like, make a comment, just let me know, uh, because I want to know what kind of videos you guys are interested in. If the mission editor videos are beneficial to you, awesome, I want to know about it. Uh, if you guys would prefer me to do more of the aircraft tutorial videos and less of the mission tutorial videos, that's also fine, but I'm not going to know if that's what you want unless you let me know. I also have a Patreon going. Uh, it still has a lot of the old information from when I ran it the last time I was doing tutorials. Uh, this time it's going to be a little bit more consistent. So if you want, go ahead and uh, take a look at that. The links to that will be in the description below. So a quick tip, one of the, one of the things you need to keep in mind when you're flying the P-51, once you set takeoff power, don't touch your power anymore. The more you mess around with your power setting, the more the plane is going to torque around one direction or the other. Alright. So you'll notice that uh, I don't have any way to see the waypoints that I set for myself. Uh, I just know that the airport that I'm going towards, the target range, is going to be over there. But if I pull up my kneeboard here by pressing right shift and K, you'll see that I do have all of my uh, waypoints on there. I don't have any indication where I am on the map. I just see where I'm supposed to be going. So for somebody who's not in a plane that has uh, a digital display, a digital map, a moving map of some sort, the waypoints aren't super useful. But if you're good at reading these kind of sectional style maps, it can be, it can definitely be useful. I mean, in, in this case, I know that I'm supposed to be turning towards the south, so I'm going to turn to, I don't know, say 180 because now I see that I'm up along the coast. And there's a bigger view. Hey, and there's the target range in front of me. It looks like there's several units there. So I can close my kneeboard and get set up for my attack run. All 
Alright. Go ahead and set my RPM 2700, which I believe is cruise for the P51. And pull my manifold pressure back to about 35. Let me go ahead and get my gun set up. I don't need my boost on anymore. Go ahead and trim myself out. Let's go ahead and set my rockets and set them on single. And yes, I know that I'm falling, but that's fine. This isn't a beauty contest. And my guns will hook you up. There we go. So guns are ready. Rockets are ready. Got my sight up. There's my target range. Looks like I've got several transport Ural 375s. I've got my command post right there in the center. I've got two fuel trucks, and the rest of them are transport Urals. So that's great. Got my targets off of my left wing. I'm going to go ahead and turn in and go for a run. Let's see if we can take out the command post first. Probably not, because I pulled a little bit too early. There we go. That is how you take out a command post. And everybody else is like, wow, that guy was crazy. We're getting the hell out of here. But as you can see, the mission worked. The pilot didn't work, but the mission worked. So actually, at this point, what I can do is I can go and say uh, briefing or choose slot and pick a different aircraft. Briefing will just give me my briefing again. If my plane is destroyed and I click fly again, it'll put me back in a new plane, the same plane that I was already in. If I were still flying the plane or the plane weren't damaged or maybe I went and landed and, and I just wanted to respawn the plane rather than wait for the uh, repair cycle to go through, um, I can always click here and go to choose slot and that'll bring up the slot again. Now, if I'm flying multiplayer and there's a bunch of people in the in the server as well, it'll actually show which people are in which slot, and you can pick an unused slot and fly from there, or you can actually switch slots, uh, which will despawn the plane that you're currently in and then respawn a new one. And then briefing, and then fly, and then here I am, ready to go again. Now that did not restart the mission. That command truck has been destroyed and all of the other trucks have moved around. So that is fun. But we've accomplished our goal. We have a mission here that has one unit that's flyable by us, another unit that a friend can join in and fly with us, several targets out on a range that's easy to identify, and it worked, the mission worked. So we can go here and go to uh, quit. And what that's going to do is kick us back to a debrief screen, which basically shows how the mission goes. It's kind of like a, a, a summary of the mission. And all of these failure states are me crashing. Now you can save the track of that if you want. Um, I'm not going to save that track because I'm going to try and pretend that it never happened. You can save the debriefing, which I believe is just a, a, a spreadsheet version of this. You can watch the track again if you want to watch yourself fail like I just did. Uh, or hopefully succeed. Hopefully you'll be watching yourself succeed. Uh, you can fly the mission again. So if you're putting together a single player mission, you can go and test it again. If there was one thing that you weren't 100% sure about, or you know maybe let's try something else, you can go fly it again. Or you can always click back into the mission editor, and that'll take you right back into where you were. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could make changes. I could uh, modify things. I could tweak things. But I'm actually pretty happy with where this is for now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Just go File, Save, and exit the Mission Editor. And that's the end of the tutorial for today. A quick look at the Mission Editor. If you have any questions, comments, by all means, leave them in the, in the video below. If you like these types of videos, subscribe, give me a like, thumbs up. Uh, check out my Patreon, follow me on Twitter. I'm also on Twitch. A lot of times I'm going to be streaming these tutorial series on Twitch and then editing those down uh, to display on YouTube. So if you want kind of a preview look at what's going to be coming. Go and look me up on Twitch. I am uh, Cyrix everywhere. P-S-Y-R-I-X-X. -X. You can find me everywhere on the internet. That's my handle. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you're going to go and start putting together missions of your own. 
Just play around with the mission editor. Put down a bunch of different ground units. Put down a bunch of different uh, air-to-air -air units. If there are other aircraft that you already know how to fly, put those down instead of the P-51. Go in and, and practice. That's the only way you get better at flying in any capacity. In real life, in simulators, it doesn't matter. You have to go out and you have to give uh, at least some kind of an effort to make sure that your skills are getting better. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. In the next video, we're going to take those targets that we put on the easy range and create a trigger system so that when you finish taking out all of the targets, they respawn. So you will never have to reload the mission. You will just have a constantly cycling group of uh, enemy targets to be able to take out. And that is going to be a lot of fun with you and your friends when you're playing online because you'll be able to just fly around for hours and do nothing but take out targets. Makes it a lot more streamlined and, and, and smooth. Anyway, I will see you in the next video.